Hello there everyone! In this module, we'll be learning about female infertility. First, let's learn about ovulation induction agents. Ovulation induction agents are crucial in the management of infertility, especially for women with anovulatory cycles. These medications work by different mechanisms to stimulate the ovaries to produce and release eggs, thereby increasing the chances of conception. First, there's clomiphene citrate. Mechanism Clomiphene citrate is a selective estrogen receptor modulator that exhibits both estrogen antagonist and agonist effects. Clomiphene promotes the release of gonadotropins, like follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, by inhibiting the negative feedback of estrogen on the hypothalamus, enhancing the natural process of ovulation. Indication Clomiphene citrate is particularly effective for inducing ovulation in oligoovulatory women classified under World Organization Class II, normogonadotropic normoestrogenic ovulatory dysfunction. Limitations Clomiphene citrate is less effective in World Health Organization Class I, or hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, and Class III, hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, patients, due to their different underlying causes of infertility. Next are aromatase inhibitors. Example, letrozole. Mechanism. Aromatase inhibitors block the enzyme aromatase, which converts androgens to estrogens. Reduction in estrogen levels stimulates the hypothalamic pituitary axis to increase the production of gonadotropins, leading to follicular development and ovulation. Indications. Aromatase inhibitors are used for anovulatory World Health Organization Class II patients, especially those with a poor response to clomiphene, for example, those with no ovulation or thin endometrium. Letrozole has shown superior efficacy in inducing ovulation and achieving live births in those with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Advantages over clomiphene Aromatase inhibitors produce fewer follicles and lower estradiol levels, reducing the risk of multiple gestation. Also, they have a shorter half-life, reducing anti-estrogen effects on the endometrium and cervical mucus. Food and Drug Administration Approval Aromatase inhibitors are not approved by the Food and Drug Administration for the treatment of infertility, although they are used off-label for this purpose. Next, we'll learn about gonadotropin therapy. Mechanism Gonadotropin therapy directly stimulates the ovaries to produce multiple follicles by supplying exogenous follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, mimicking the natural gonadotropins. Indications It's used in normal gonadotropic or World Health Organization Class II and ovulatory patients who have not ovulated or conceived with clomiphene treatment and or insulin-sensitizing agents. Also, it serves as a second-line therapy for hypogonadotropic or World Health Organization Class I and ovulatory patients with hypopituitarism or hypothalamic amenorrhea. Clinical Outcome Gonadotropin therapy leads to increased live birth rates compared to continued clomiphene treatment in patients who did not conceive after six cycles of clomiphene. Considerations Gonadotropin therapy requires close hormonal and sonographic monitoring due to the risk of multiple gestation and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Also, it's more expensive compared to other ovulation induction methods. Now let's learn about other agents in ovulation induction. In addition to the primary pharmacological agents for ovulation induction, several other strategies and medications play crucial roles in managing different aspects of infertility, particularly in patients with specific conditions such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, insulin resistance, and hyperprolactinemia. First, metformin. Mechanism. Primarily used to treat type 2 diabetes, metformin improves insulin sensitivity, reducing hyperinsulinemia. In the context of polycystic ovarian syndrome, this effect can lead to an increase in menstrual cyclicity and spontaneous ovulation. Clinical use. Although not as effective as clomiphene in achieving live birth rates, metformin is recommended for ovulation induction in patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome who also exhibit glucose intolerance. It may facilitate weight loss, enhance ovulation, and provide beneficial metabolic effects for pregnancy. Considerations. 
The routine use of metformin for ovulation induction is not recommended, except in cases of glucose intolerance. Next is laparoscopic ovarian drilling. Procedure. Laparoscopic ovarian drilling is a surgical method that involves making tiny burns on the ovary's surface using diathermy or laser. This technique reduces ovarian androgen production and can stimulate ovulation. Indication. This procedure is reserved for subfertile and ovulatory polycystic ovarian syndrome patients who have not responded to medical therapy. Efficacy. It has comparable cumulative ongoing pregnancy rates to gonadotropin therapy, but with a significantly lower risk of multiple pregnancies. However, due to its invasive nature, it's considered after other treatments have failed and all other fertility factors have been addressed. Next, we'll cover dopamine agonists. Example, bromocryptine. Mechanism. These agents decrease the production of prolactin from the pituitary gland. Elevated prolactin levels can inhibit ovulation by affecting the secretion of follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Clinical use. Dopamine agonists are the primary treatment for patients with hyperprolactinemia causing anovulation. By reducing prolactin levels, dopamine agonists can restore normal menstrual cycles and ovulation. Finally, we'll cover assisted reproductive technologies. Techniques. These include in vitro fertilization and oocyte donation. Indication. These technologies are considered for oligoovulatory individuals who do not achieve pregnancy with other fertility treatments. Patients with World Health Organization Class III infertility or premature ovarian failure may benefit from oocyte donation, which involves controlled ovarian hyperstimulation and oocyte retrieval from a donor. Efficacy. Assisted reproductive technologies offer a chance for pregnancy to people who have not succeeded with other forms of fertility treatment, although it comes with its own set of challenges and considerations. Thank you for listening to this module. We'll see you next time.